It's great to be with you today. Um, so I'm just undoing all my electrical stuff here. It's great to be with you. I want to first thank you all for praying for our grandson, Meshach. After his accident, he fell from a third floor balcony. I don't know what he was doing on there, but um, there he was. And, um, but he's ended up with the results of a stroke because he had a brain bleed and a stroke. He's 25 years old. He's, he was strong. He was a weightlifter, so we are confident that he will... Um, what's that doing there? Anyway, I'll, sorry, I've got something... Oh, close, there it is. Just, just talking to him. We are confident that he will come through this, and um, at the moment he's paralyzed on his right-hand side, um, but he moved his right leg the other week from his hip. So that's a great, great change. Obviously, God has designed our bodies in an amazing way, and he's got new neural pathways uh, to enable him to do things that he... Uh, may not have been able to do. So we're trusting God. And we want to see him come out of this, not just healed physically, but um, a transformed person. He's, he has a Spurgeous syndrome. So life is a struggle for him anyway. But thank you so much. Please continue to pray. It's going to be a long, drawn-out process. Our daughter uh, is obviously finding it hard, but we're really blessed. Now, I want you to imagine the experience that I've had. Uh, I shouldn't really because I'm going to be talking about faith for a a little while this morning. I I don't think it's to do with the government. I think Pastor Joe has just shortened the meeting so that I won't speak long. And I think also he's pushed the keyboard a lot over by the wall, though, so I can't play unless I was Nadine's size, which I'm not. But I'm, I'm into all these conspiracy things. But um, imagine for a moment how I've been in the last week. You know, sometimes you get something in your mind and you worry, and yet that turns to anxiety and that turns to dread and it turns to fear. And, and the closer you get to that event that you are not looking forward to, the worse it gets sleepless nights. And then the day comes and you've been praying. You're saying, God, please answer my prayer. So, You can imagine me this morning as I came here with a dark cloud over me. Yes, Simone and Pierre will be surprised because I seem quite chirpy in the car. Thank you for the lift, by the way. Uh, About the, the, the joy that I felt. And I thought, why did I worry? Why did I fear? Why did I go through all of that? Because Pastor Joe is not playing his trumpet. Some people think, why, why... Well, the thing is, why worry when we can pray? Why worry when we can pray? There's an old hymn in the, what we used to use in, in uh, England called, uh, and then it goes, a mind at perfect peace with God. And one of the verses, why should I ever anxious be when such a God is mine? Isn't that a great sentiment? He watches o'er me night and day and tells me mine is thine. And I've been surprised and disappointed by some of the folk that I, I've cared for. Yes, some of them are old and, 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 and uh, not disabled so much, but they're old. I look after the older people in my church. And for 18 months now, I've been teaching them Monday to Friday on WhatsApp, just short messages. And I've been phoning a lot of people, video calls, Zoom meetings. You know what it's been like. And I've been very sad at the fear that has gripped my Christian friends. Because however terrible this pandemic and other things, because life has still gone on with its challenges and its difficulties. But at the end of it, some people have been absolutely consumed with fear and anxiety to a great degree. And and yes, I'm not blaming them or criticizing them, but I would have liked to have seen faith. I'm so glad that Chris and I... uh, I think Sandro started off by talking about this this morning, about the difficulties we encounter. And I think we, we've been married 50 years in, in a couple of weeks, and we've been through very, very difficult times. Our first child had Down syndrome. She died at six weeks. And, and we've, we seem to have gone through a catalogue of difficulties, but, but God has brought us through it. We couldn't have done it, could we, Chris? God took us through it. And, and I've spoken to people, and I said, why should I ever anxious be... I belong to God. I am bought with a price. Hallelujah. I am not my own. And there are some simple verses that we all know. You don't need a theologian like Dr. Joe. Do I have to call him doctor this year? Thank you. 
I was so, listen, I was so pleased to see his post. God bless him. He's worked hard. And Christine's worked harder keeping him together. But we're bought with a price. We are not our own. Now, obviously, we, in the 18 months, my church and myself and Chris, we, we've done, uh, we, we follow government guidelines, and I think we, we should do that, and you're doing it with, with the, the cutting down the number of services and wearing masks, and, uh, and, and some of you look better with my Oh, Pastor Joe's taking his off. And some are saying, Pastor Joe, please wear a mask. You think they care about my health. No, you just don't look so good. But we're bought with a price. I'm amazed that some people, so many people today, they come and go to church as they, as they will. Oh, I don't want to go to church today. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Hang on a minute. We are bought with a price. We are not our own. And whatever your phrase or whatever your jargon is, you gave your life to Jesus. You realize you couldn't live your life uh, as it was because you were a sinner. But you took his life. And you, he gave you his righteousness. We are not our own. We are not free to make our own decisions. Well, we sort of are. But we read this morning that faith is the substance. Or as the New Living Translation goes, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. What we believe, we will get. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. Faith. It's sad today that in many parts of the Christian world, faith is equated with wealth. Faith is equated with getting things. Oh, look at that little car you drive. You've not got much faith. Look at the way you have peace in your heart when trouble comes. That's faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, well, listen, Chris and I are going through difficulties at the moment, of course, with Meshach and other things. But what God has given us is peace in our heart. And we know that is from God. Uh, otherwise, we'd be trembling wrecks like everybody. But faith is substantial. Faith should make a difference in our lives. As I say, some quarters of the Christian world, it's all about money, 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 to quote an Abba song. But as the Beatles said, money can't buy you love, but Jesus can. And Paul wrote through the Holy Spirit, yes, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. How did he do that? Because he said, I'm crucified with Christ. I don't have the rights to my own thoughts, my own opinions, my own desires. I'm crucified with Christ. And the life that I live in this body, in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, or faith in the Son of God, who loved me and who gave himself for me. And if, it's, if there's one verse or a couple of verses that I've, I've kept reiterating, kept repeating to my folk as I've taught them day by day, is that God loves us. God loves you. God loves me. And as I look in the mirror at this crumbling wreck with white hair, I, I wonder how he could love me as one of the songs goes. But it's Jesus. God so loved me and you that he gave, gave. God is a propitious God. That's a posh word. God gives and gives and gives. And we need to receive and receive and receive. He so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. What's his name? Jesus. That whoever believes in him will not perish. That's us. Hallelujah but we'll have eternal life. I love that bit in John, and I quote this at funerals. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. He that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son has not life. But praise God this morning, you and I have life. You and I know that whatever happens, God is in control. We're bought with the precious blood of Jesus. And that's our faith. Faith is not repeating scriptures over and over and over again like some mantra. Faith is not saying, 
Uh, I'm claiming that car. I'm claiming that home. I'm cla- it's not that. Faith is taking the words of Jesus when he said, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in my life. That's faith. What, your will? Oh, what about my will? You haven't got one. You gave it to Jesus. You get That's faith. I think of the faith of, 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 the, of the three friends of, of uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach. Thank you for praying for Meshach. And Abednego. As they went to that fiery furnace and it was heated up hotter than normal and even the big soldiers that threw them in died because of the extreme heat. But they'd said to the king, King, he said, God is able to deliver us. And we say that, don't we? God is able to deliver us. But these men have faith that said, even if he doesn't, and that's where we should live, even if he doesn't, even if problems come, even if we don't get healed, even if we don't get that money, even if we don't get that position, even if we need to let God's will be done in our lives. Because God's will, not our will, may not look what we want, but it's what's best for us. And, re- and prophetically speaking of Jesus in that Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And it doesn't continue because Pastor Joe isn't playing the trumpet. It says, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, your symbols of authority, they comfort me. And so faith is knowing that whatever that befalls you, whatever difficulties, whatever challenges, you, a lot of people blame the devil. It's not the devil. The devil is under our feet. Jesus destroyed the power of the devil on the cross. When God raised him from the dead, it says in Ephesians, he seated him in the highest place, far above all rulers, authority, might and dominion and power. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus said, doesn't he, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. He says in Revelation, I have the keys of death and of hell. That's our Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior, the Alpha and Omega, the A to Z, the bright and morning star, the healer, the deliverer, the coming King. Your coming king, my coming king. His name is Jesus. And whatever the world shows us, whatever seems to be happening, oh my God, the world is getting terrible. We normally watch a television program called Strictly Come Dancing. Oh, I love it. But I won't watch it until the two male contestants are voted out. Come on. Last year, they had two female contestants. We didn't watch it till the two female contestants were voted out. You know what I mean? They were dancing together. Male and male, female and female. What a world we're living in. But of course, we need to love them as God loved us. Faith is learned like the, the, the man at the fire. They said, even if he doesn't, we're going to keep trusting him. And that's a picture we pick up prophetically in the Psalms, Psalm after Psalm, where we speaks of Jesus. And he said, the wicked are doing this, the wicked are doing, but as for me, that's the difference between us. As for me, whatever befalls, whatever difficulties, I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep praising. Have you heard this from me before? Yes, you're going to keep hearing it. Hallelujah. If you don't want to hear it again, ring up Air Malta. Don't let Bob Sear come back. Jesus, our Savior, our Deliverer. That's faith. Faith isn't hoping God will take you out of a situation. Faith is knowing that God will take you through it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43. There you go through the water, the fire, the floods. And I used to get that promise from God so many times. I Oh, no, not the floods again. Not the fire again. Then I realized after a long time, I will be with you. I I believe Pastor Joe will be no better than me. That the word um, fear not is there in the Bible 365 times, isn't it? Something like that. And, and it's amazing how we Christians, we take some things, we, it's almost like a little charm box. We, we read them and we, oh yes, I mustn't fear. They don't realize that actually that's a command of God. 
So when we're going through difficulties and challenges and problems and frightening things, I know that we go through terrible things, don't get me wrong. Sandra was spot on this morning. But whatever we're going through, the Bible says, fear not. It's a command. Don't fear. Hallelujah. And I know Joe and Christine know about that because Joe's been ill again or whatever. He had to dash off to the hospital to make sure you got a pastor this week. And we go through these things just because we're Christians. Oh, my goodness. I've had people saying, oh, I don't have to worry about all of these precautions. I read Psalm 91 every day. Come on. I've buried people that read Psalm 91 every day. We're real people in a real world. But the difference is God loves us. And he gave Jesus for us. And we need to live a life above anxiety, above fear, knowing that whatever befalls us, God's going to get me through. And he's not going to take me out. I remember years ago, you may remember years ago, I mean, how long have we been coming? 24 years? How old's Mark? Oh, well, he was about 18 months when you were in the garages, yeah? And, and we've been coming that long, and, and, and um, yeah, I've been getting older and older, and I creak more, unsurprisingly. But God has still got us going. And the amazing thing is that God gets us through. I, I used to be a runner in those days. I could run 10, 12 miles, and now I can't run for a bus uh, because I had trouble breathing uh, for a while, but it's getting better. But, but the point is, you can't rely on your physical ability. You need to rely upon the Lord. And I used to run, and I noticed that although it's harder to run up hills, I actually got fitter running up hills. My heart got stronger. The, the veins on my legs and my muscles on my legs got bigger because I was running uphill. If you want to get strong, you build up to the high uh, uh, weights. Hallelujah. And sometimes God needs to take us through these difficulties to build us, to make us grow, to make us strong. He can't do it by just making all the problems vanish. And faith is living in a place knowing that God will get you through. And you know we're not talking theory because we've got Meshach and we've got other difficulties, other challenges. Faith is believing God in spite of all the problems. Faith is looking at the situation and laughing at it. Hallelujah. My God is able to deliver me. Hallelujah. If he doesn't, well, he knows what he's doing. And my position is to stay in worship, to stay in trust, to stay believing, because God has a greater purpose. And one of the verses that's kept coming to me in all of the thing with Meshach that has kept me in this peace is that the Bible says, and Paul wrote it through the Holy Spirit, we know, he wrote to the Corinthian church, we know that all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So I know uh, uh, without doubt that whatever we're going through, whatever is happening to us, we know, and whatever the devil's plans, we know that God is working it out to good. Do you remember the story of Joseph, how he was, he was taken and he, was, he went into Potiphar's house and Mrs. Potiphar tried to seduce him, but because he's a godly man, he said, no, no, no. And she lied about him, and he ended up in prison for many, many years. And we know the story how he had the dreams, and the, he ended up as number two in the kingdom of Egypt. And eventually, we realized that God took him through all of that seeming punishment in order to save his family and the nation as it would become of Israel. God had a higher purpose. He could have got bitter, he could have got angry, but he believed God. And he, <coughs> he was so righteous in his faith in God that he, he became uh, really somebody very important, not only in Potiphar's house, not only in the jail, but in the kingdom. And his brothers came and didn't know him. You know the story and when they realized who we were, they, they were afraid. He said, God, he said, 
God meant it for good. You meant it for evil, selling me to those slavers, but God meant it for good. When you have problems, when you have difficulties, when things happen to you, and I don't want to mention anything, but whatever happens to you, God is working something for good. Hallelujah. However painful, however terrible, keep rejoicing. God knows what he's doing. And as I look back on my long life, I realize there's been situations, I thought, what is God doing? This is not what I wanted. But I realize, as I learned to pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done in my life. The important thing, the the life-changing thing, was for me to humble myself and say, Lord, let your will, not my will, So when problems come and we're tempted to say, what's going on? God, what are you doing? We might be tempted to say that, but we're able to say, Lord, thank you that you're working out your will in my life. It's not the way I would do it. I would do it with ice creams and and nice experiences, but, but you know what I need to get me where you want me to be. Hallelujah. And in my last six and a half years ministering at Ealing Christian Centre, mainly among old people or people that are stuck at home or people that are in hospital, people that are dying. I've been speaking to them on the phone. Some of them have died. I did two funerals recently. Nothing to do with COVID, by the way. And I say to people, as the Holy Spirit has led me over the years, that God is going to get you through this. And you, you may be thinking this is a terrible thing to happen, but God is going to get through this and you're going to be in a position with God in faith and in trust and in love that you would have never have got to without that problem, without this difficulty. And I've found so many times that that has been the case. As we trust him through these difficulties, God will get us through faith is substantial. Faith is better than money in the bank. (laughs) Hallelujah. Faith, with faith you've got everything you need. You've got peace of mind. You've got love. But I want to finish because your your prayers have been answered. I haven't got a lot of time. I want to finish with this thought. As I said, our friends elsewhere in the world, faith is faith. Faith in faith. But faith is in a, in a person. Hallelujah. Because like everything else in Christian, your Christian life, it's built upon a relationship. I remember many years ago, I was on the treadmill. I never went training in the evening. It was too busy. But one evening, I thought, I must go to the gym. I, and I went on the, I'm on the treadmill. I'm, I'm in the beginning of a, 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 an hour's run. And, and I'm about 20 minutes into it, I'm starting to get tired. And a young lady just got onto the onto the Uh, treadmill next to me and the trainer that boy said oh you've got to take it easy because of your injury he said to this lady and he said actually you should talk to the guy next to you because they knew I used to pray for the sick and God used to heal them in the gym and um, you can't keep the Holy Spirit in the church you know and uh, so I'm running and the last thing I want to do because I'm breathing I've is talk to this lady so I said what's What's wrong with you? And she tells me about this injury she has and she can't run. Well, she'd run, she'd run gently 20 minutes by the time. And I said to her, but I said, do you believe in Jesus? Yes, she said, I'm a Catholic. And I didn't say, hey, you're a Catholic. You're all wrong. You're going to hell. No, I said, that's great. She says, why? I says, because I can pray for you and Jesus will heal you. She says, I said, she said, oh, I'm a Catholic. But I said, you believe in God? She said, yes. That's wonderful. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. I said, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? She said, yes. I said, did you know Jesus can heal your body? She says, no. So I said, and I went through some scriptures as we're running. As we're running, I'm giving her some scriptures. And and I said, this is what the Bible says, blah, blah, blah. And, And suddenly she said, do you know what? And we're both running. Hadn't even prayed for her. She says, the pain is gone. Look, I can run faster. The Lord had healed her just while I was talking to her on the treadmill. Isn't what a wonderful God? But the important thing is I started off by saying to her, do you know the Lord's Prayer? Yes, she said. What does it begin with? Our Father. Yes, I said, because Christianity or, or 
Christian faith is not about ritual. It's about relationship. He is our Father. And anyway, the Lord healed that lady. How wonderful. And what I want to end with now is the fact that everything that we do is about relationship. We're not supposed to have faith in new cars, new houses, more money. We're supposed to have faith in our loving heavenly Father. Amen? That's, it's about relation, not faith in faith. Quoting endlessly the same old scripture, by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes, well, maybe we are. We, are, we are. we have a relationship. God is our Father. And he loves us beyond measure. I look at Abigail's uh, Facebook page and Robert's in there popping up and, and the, the boys are in there. It's great to see mum loving her little boys, the things she says. And I, I think I've got about 40 or more Facebook friends in this church. They're all gone. They, they thought we have enough of him on Facebook, so they're not here this morning, not many of them. But the point is, it's love. And everything in your life, whatever difficulty you're going through, God who loves you, is taking you the way you need to go for your best. Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, stripping everything aside, stripping Bible studies aside, stripping everything, it's you and God. It's your relationship. It's your love for God that really matters in the end. Hallelujah. Of course, you need Bible studies to learn that God loves you. Don't get me wrong. But it's relationship. If you have faith, Faith comes out of relationship. Faith comes out of love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's just stand. I'm going to pray. I don't need to be a prophet to hear that you're all thinking, oh, thank goodness for that. We thought we'd have another hour. Father, we thank you today that when we strip everything away, like that song of Matt Rebben, it's all about you, Lord. When we strip even our Pentecostal uh, culture, the things we do in church, not that it's wrong, but it's all about Jesus. It's all about the Father who loves us and Jesus who died for us and the Holy Spirit who communicates heaven to us. We thank you, Lord, that this book is all about faith, not just chapter 11, because it explodes with revelation how Jesus is supreme and superior to everyone and everything. He is Lord of all. He's my Lord. He's your Lord. He's my Savior. He's your Savior. Father, we thank you. Why don't you just lift your hands? I'm just, Father, thank you. As we, as we come to a close, Holy Spirit, I can feel you touching us right now. Just permeate. Just touch every heart and every life. Maybe some that are anxious, some that have struggles, and quite reasonably and quite, you know, normal. Concerns about the future. Maybe there are some that have still bothered with hurt from the past. Bitterness for the way people treat us. Lord, just release peace. As we let go of those things. Maybe you're anxious because of a health issue. Just let it go. Let it go. Just touch our... Maybe there's some that need physical healing today. Lord... You don't need me to go around laying hands on people. You don't need me to put in oil. You don't need me to do anything. Lord, you just have your way this morning. Let your will be done as we let down our will. Not my will, Lord. Your will. Just touch hearts and lives today. And for those that have been anxious, just open up a new way of, of, of speaking into their hearts and lives. Because fear has no place, but faith has. Touch our hearts and lives. As we read the word, do what you said you'll do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Breakthrough into lives. 
In the name of Jesus, and everybody said...